What's up, fam? Welcome to Off the Reservation, a show that isn't a ri- afraid to hit that line. I'm your number one wizard, Mal. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm Mel. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the son of a casa. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> I just Uh-oh. heard what I said. <laughs> oh, that wasn't your intention? No, that wasn't my uh, intention. Well, you know. It is what it is. I said it. Let's let's just go on. Let's move on. <laughs> let's not linger. I like I tried to make. Lingers, I was man. thinking all the jokes I could make to uh, avert. And I was like, no. It all comes back to jokes about cocaine, and that's uh, just that's yeah. Just, that's. <laughs> I mean, that's not where we're we're not going there. We don't want to go there. No, that, that's um, not what this episode is. <laughs> all right, move moving on, moving on, moving on. This episode is not about the white lightning. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, let's go into news. Let's let's just uh, hey guys, yeah, this is a uh, second week. We're gonna try out this uh, this uh, little little news. What, what do we what do we land on for this segment? News news news. Natives stories. in the news. Natives in the news stories. N- native news. Natives making news. Native news. Natives that sounds like news. a lot like Nick news. Nick news. Yeah, I don't um, know. We're still working on the title. Newsy. So, in the news, we have Nicole Mann, and she is a uh, California native woman who is going to be the first um, native woman to go to the International Space Station. Well, first first native woman to go to space. Yeah. Yeah, it would be yeah. the first native woman to go to space. That's, that's pretty that's Yeah, pretty that's cool. pretty intense. Uh, yeah, she's uh, going in October. On her first mission to the International Space Station. So congrats. Thank you for that representation. Yeah. We're very We're excited it. for you. And uh, yeah. I don't, I mean, <laughs> the, I've always wanted to go into space. See, I think that's <laughs> like cool. Space. Like, not only is it like an indigenous person, but an, it's an indigenous woman. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for that's sure. sick. Like, that's sick to be able to tell my daughters. Like, yeah. One of the first indigenous people in the outer space was, was a woman. You mm-hmm. know, that's, that's big. I wonder if she's going to take anything like specific. You know, yeah, like we'll have to look out for that. We'll have to follow up in October. This when, like takes when me the, back to the episode we did, Natives in Space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Natives she, in Space. Does your jingle dress <laughs> make a sound in space? Like, what do you do with your beadwork in space? <laughs> uh, in other news, um, is on, on a more somber note. There was uh, basically the death of a tribe, uh, an Amazon tribe that was recently de- uh, was recently declared extinct. As the last uh, remaining member of this mysterious tribe was um, has died, uh, the man was only known as Indio du Boraco, which I'm not sure, but this is Boraco. out in South America. Um, over the years, he had resisted at all attempts at people making contact with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, lived in solidarity, um, solidarity, solitary, solitary <laughs> life mm-hmm. um, by himself and uh, he would go as far as laying traps I guess and shooting arrows at people that try to get too close see um, he just got tired of those telemarketers and, and all those uh, scam callers yeah, too just... many people ask him about the warranty on his car and he <laughs> yeah. was like this is it, <laughs> this is it. Um, <laughs> but no yeah that's um, that's sad uh, a lot of people were were sad about that because you know it's just like a whole culture and yeah. and you know tribe is just gone you know what i mean uh which is pretty intense i mean um i it's happened many times over the years yeah over the years um but you know just you know it being modern day it's kind of a weird thought to think that this people group is just gone you know um i mean there's a whole discussion there that that we we could get into on on uh, the attempt by colonization to yeah no I think it all comes back to it, this happened over and over in our mm-hmm. in our history and I think what's just so interesting is that it has happened so close to now in the in the wake of what our culture is shifting to now it yeah. is sad that it's still happening you yeah. know and it's going to continue to happen but yeah that was interesting. So in other news, Kanye West. Kanye made, West. Yeah, he's, he's once just, again making news. Yay! I think he goes by Yay now. It's his yay? legal name. He's Yay. He got that changed. Uh, well, I, his mom called him Clay. <laughs> <laughs> his mom called him Kanye. What's Kanye West doing, man? Um, let's see. He made news with his new clothing line uh, displayed in Gap stores. Gap stores. Yeah, he's selling clothes in Gap. 
Uh, Gap works uh, workers were told to leave the clothes in large trash bags and not to help customers, but rather make them search through the bags. He said he wanted people to understand how it felt to be homeless. Did you guys see pictures? Uh, do you, have you guys seen those pictures of people in the stores? It's kind of interesting. It is yeah. literally in just large trash bags and people are like <laughs> rummaging <laughs> around inside them. Yeah. I mean, I mean, isn't that like any high schooler's bedroom at this point? You know, just <laughs> all these clothes yeah. stacked up in piles everywhere. Well, you're, uh, Son Picasso, you're in the fashion world. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us your, your thoughts on this. Uh, uh, was this, was this authentic? Was he trying to make a social statement or was this a cash grab? No, I think it was 100% <laughs> uh, cash grab. I don't think there was any sort of social statement made. Um, <laughs> Anybody who's been in, I guess, the sneaker game for a minute knows that this is how kids shop. Like, you go to any sort of sneaker con, any sort of, uh, like, resale place, yeah. like, where yeah. clothes like this are, like, being sold. Yeah. That's that's the way these kids are shopping. They're bringing their items in trash bags. They're literally throwing them on the floor, pouring them out on the ground, and letting kids just dig through it. And it's literally kids selling clothes to kids, right? Mm. Like, that's mm. who's in the resale market now. And so it's just, they just took that same culture and just repackaged it and gave it to the masses. So like all these little like Midwestern mom and pops who've never seen, you know, a sneaker con or never been to, um, like here in New Mexico, we call them rumble in the deserts. And it's just literally like hundreds upon hundreds of vendors of like kids that go thrifting, find vintage Mm. pieces you know yeah. clean them up some 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 of them clean them some of them don't they just throw them in trash bags <laughs> yeah. and they literally like take them to this warehouse and dump them on the middle of the floor so it's like it's part of a culture that's been oh going, yeah it's been happening already like for like years mm-hmm. already so, so like you, when he says that he's trying to make a social statement you think that it's kind of uh bs uh, a yeah bit. i think he's just trying to defend his actions right because the minute the culture knows that you're being a culture vulture yeah and you're making money uh, off culture of vulture. the culture yeah then you kind of lose credibility in us so with us good. you know what i mean yeah so <laughs> that was the wrong sound. he had to <laughs> <laughs> that was gonna... oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah he lost credibility yeah, yeah. well i don't want to say he's lost it but i'm just saying he he's could. trying to did he ever have a face in that sense oh uh, you know I I firmly believe that Kanye is like one of our Rembrandts living right now. He's got some crazy ideas, but a lot of he makes a lot of good like he the, the good art stuff. Like yeah. he's he's an artist. He's a Renaissance yeah. man. Do, and do it, you think like like a lot of the Renaissance artists is like how they weren't really recognized in their time? Like like at the at the moment, I feel like a lot of people just kind of make fun of him and his ideas. But no, the, you know what I. I think is I think we've reached a point now to where living artists are saying appreciate me now. Mm-hmm. Oh, appreciate they're able me to recognize while I'm like alive. Hey, yeah. Like you know what I'm saying everybody can go back and look at Biggie and look at how he did his word. Mm-hmm. Schemes, but at the right? time it was But he was not he wasn't saying recognize me now as the greatest in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we have him and that's what he's saying and it's like prove him wrong, right? Yeah. Like I, all I know is like the fashion that he was making five years ago, the rest of the world is just now catching up. And it seems so forward to where people don't know how to wear it yet. You know mm, what I mean? Mm, yeah. And it's just it's just new. But in the same sense, it's old to him because he already yeah. thought of it. You know, man, that's interesting. Cool, guys. I mean, that was uh, that was our quick uh, native native news uh, working Discussion. title. News. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool, man. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and news in the know we'll be back with our main topic thanks guys and we're back welcome everyone welcome 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 all right <laughs> oh that was abrupt um, <laughs> yeah yeah welcome well, i mean that that was the line yeah that uh, was the line. Earlier, we were talking about um, a little bit about Kanye West, possibly. What was the term you used? Uh, culture. Culture vulture. Culture vulture. Yeah. Culture vulture. <laughs> that's right. That's the right one. There. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Uh, about how he might have been, um, you know, delving into the. 
I don't know what uh, would the word be a not appropriating. I'd say exploiting the culture. Exploiting, Explo- yeah, he was yeah. exploiting the a culture that um, that just the kids made. You yeah. know what I mean? It was. It's very like it's like you would never go into the mall and see like just your normal big box mall stores just have all their clothes just laying out. You yeah. know what I mean? Until now, at least. Well, he's, it's like he's trying to make it mainstream. Is that is that what it is? Or I don't know. I think, I know. you know, it, it's really weird because you don't, like, it's not new to kids in the culture. You yeah. know what I mean? That's just yeah. how they shop. It's new to people who aren't. You know what I mean? Right. And so I think he wanted to just shock everybody just like always, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that kind of like, so our discussion for today, what was the topic? Uh, what was the, what was the term we were going to use for the topic today? It was like, what the line in the sand? Is that what it is? Yeah. The line in the sand, the yeah. idea that like as, as a native American artist and, and everything, like I, I personally feel like in a way I bag up, not bag up. That sounds awful, but I make my own part uh uh, my own pieces and therefore sell them to non-native americans and uh profit off of giving them selling them cultural items yeah so you you almost feel i does i mean i this was a discussion we were having earlier where Mm -hmm. it's just like where is that line of and i think the one thing that we did agree on would define was that there is art you can make art right Mm -hmm. But then there's also um, cultural significance. You're exploiting you're, appropriation, you're, yeah. cultural like, appropriation of uh, yeah. items. And as Native American artists, um, you know, because uh, so many years, like there's na- been Native American artists forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, and, and over the years, I mean, a lot of our art or a lot of our culture has been outsourced. Like, like if you can even wrap your mind around that yeah that it's been outsourced to like places like china and, and taiwan yeah. like yeah here's a little backstory though it's so funny for me to like get on instagram and look at these influencers who are native and then you hover over about and it's like account out of vietnam and you're just like what come oh, on really yeah oh, like man. you're not yeah yeah it's just it's a trip well i mean even even uh one of our guests uh jason sunday he had posted a a, a story on instagram how of um he goes you can get this and it's a picture of uh this figurine it's a cat with a headdress on wearing like a chieftain's blanket uh and he's like you can get this uh over uh, for 2.99 over at our local um gas station Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like yeah no native is going to like produce you know that kind of a thing Mm -hmm. but you can buy it at all the gas stations between here and California, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you we're know? still selling it though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's not us. We're not creating it. We're not selling it, but gotcha. these gas stations across America in the Southwest are selling yeah. these items. And I think and, this is where this topic gets interesting because obviously from our point of view, um, a non-native making this sort of like, right? because that was kind of in the news recently too about like how some of these clothing brands were yeah. taking um you know symbols symbols and um just designs that mm-hmm. were in our culture um and mass the Navajo them. tribe yeah yeah and, and you were and telling us about who was it urban outfitters yeah. urban outfitters uh, i think it was like maybe 10 years ago or oh so. this is a while back it was a okay. while back but it's that's the thing is it's a it's an issue that has been um around for a very long time yeah and uh but, urban outfitters had taken like a, a chieftain blanket or some kind of uh, uh blanket pattern that was specific to a navajo um rug weaver mm-hmm. and copied it and reprinted it on t-shirts and yeah. were selling them as like a chieftain blanket t-shirt yeah and they're just store. totally took the whole name too huh yeah the description yeah. And and we're making bank off of it because, I mean, it like it was fashionable. Oh, yeah, and then not just that, but they have the bankroll to like make. Oh you know, yeah, mass produce mass this produce thing them and, and, and yeah, ship them all over the world. Yeah. Whereas like you know, if this native artist wanted to do that, it would cost him 
yeah, would more be, money than would be probably, possible yeah, for them yeah. to do that same amount of business. Um, yeah, so that's kind of uh, so obviously uh, all three of us agree that you know that's not um, that's not, not appropriate. Right. That's not mm-hmm. right. It's not appropriate, right? Um, for a non-native to be reproducing mm-hmm. that sort of stuff, but. This is where we're kind of getting into a little bit more of our discussion was like, how do native artists feel about that? Is there a line between I'm making art and and I'm I'm selling my art mm-hmm. between that and I am taking advantage of my cultural, cultural. roots, you yeah. know what mm-hmm. I mean? And it's a fine line, I think, right? I, we can all agree that it's it's tough. But there was something you mentioned, uh, San Picasso, about um, something someone she told you about it coming from oh yeah yeah, yeah this like, was really cool so being in the clothing business fashion world i've had non-natives come up and ask me can i wear this right yeah and like want to know like if they could wear like a sitting bull shirt right or like just something with native like a chief didn't shooting a, a rifle right? yeah yeah and want to mm-hmm. know can i wear this or will i be accused of cultural appropriation yeah and i mean i don't know about anybody else but you know, when you're there and you're selling in that type of environment, like race and talking about race is very like touch and go. Right. So yeah, it's I, like it's always just awkward. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm at work. You know what I mean? But yet I'm having a conversation about about race. Right. Yeah. And that doesn't happen anywhere else in America. It's almost a faux pas to talk about race at work. So I've always like been like, oh, you know, I've had the conversation, but it's always awkward. So I'm standing there with this other designer and before I could say anything, she speaks up and she goes, absolutely not. It's not a cultural appropriation. If you buy it from a native, if a native makes it and you buy it from a native, Mm -hmm. then you're giving honor to that artisan by buying it from them Yeah, and you're helping them and it's not a cultural appropriation. Yeah. And like, it was just so eloquent the way she said it. I was like, that's 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 exactly how how I feel about it. Right? Yeah. I didn't know how to put it into words before. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's super interesting. Cause that's a definitely, um, a, a, for a consumer mm-hmm. yeah. uh, that wants to respect the culture and respect yeah. the, um, yeah. See, and you know, I understand that part. And so at sometimes I kind of get bothered with influential native fashion designers because what they do is they outsource their designs from, you know, countries outside of the United States. They don't, you know, have clothing manufacturers work that they work with that are native. Yeah. So they still have to outsource. So it's a native outsourcing their designs yeah. from a foreign entity, bringing it back, selling it as native. And it's kind of weird because if I was to do that with a painting, that that doesn't work. You know what I mean? Yeah. I couldn't be like, hey here's another artist, paint this for me, and then I'm going to sell it as mine. So it's like, is this weird gray zone, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where, but And I guess that's why we say that. It's a, yeah. it's a touchy subject. Yeah, it, it is it's very a tough touchy. Line. All right, well, hey, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with some more Off the Reservation. Hey, guys. Hope you're enjoying the show. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe. Remember to share the show because sharing is caring. Now back to the show. All right, guys, and we are back with more off the reservation. My name is uh, L, and um, it's good to it's good to be here with you, you boys. <laughs> <laughs> Here's like the perfect analogy, yeah. right? To like the idea of like art meets sellout. Um, do you want to turn the AC off? Oh no! All right, we're gonna redo that real quick. <laughs> I just heard it, and I was yeah. like, "All right, guys, welcome back to Off the Reservation. It's good to be here with you boys. My name is L, and, and uh, I'm here and, with. Uh, and we did it again. <laughs> <laughs> And we were bad twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, we were talking about the uh, the line between art and appropriation. Um, See, appropriation yeah. is a good term. I, I, I like that word, but when I was coming up, the right terminology was the word sellout. Hmm. And it was like the idea of like commercialization of like the culture. Yeah. So yeah. like when I was coming up, everybody knows the band Metallica, right? Yeah. And like they were that band that like you could like 
that was just underground. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And then they heard it hit a certain level of fame where like they cut their hair off and like it was like on the cover of Rolling Stone. Started doing world, world yeah. tours. Yeah, <laughs> and people were like, "You, they just sold out." Yeah, you know what I mean. And that's just like the perfect analogy. Like, there's a, there is that point where you go so commercial that you lose your essence of of what got you there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've always, I don't want to say like I've always been the same person, but I, I really have. I've always had this level of militance. <laughs> I've always had this level of militance in my work. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, like we can go ahead and like put a picture up on like on YouTube for all YouTube viewers. But there's a picture of me with the president of the United States. Oh yeah. And like literally he's holding Giving hold- him the middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> and there I am as a little kid, like seventh, eighth grade. Good old Bill. And he, yeah, standing there with Bill Clinton. And he's like smiling like a dummy, right? Like he's got the biggest look on his face and he's holding this big giant watercolor painting that I painted, right? Yeah. And like he just thought it was the coolest thing. Well, everybody at the time thought it was the coolest thing. What they didn't realize, because they were very much taken with my age, was I drew Native Americans attacking a U.S. federal supply train and Mm. they were stealing all the weapons. Yeah. And I drew it in ledger style so all they saw was the pretty colors and the pretty pictures, but yeah. they were just just had their guard down because I was a little kid. Yeah. Well, that has always been the theme of my work from when I was a little kid to you look at my work now. Yeah. And you know that if an artist can keep that essence of who they are, then by all means you can say I'm not a sellout. You yeah. know what I mean? But you see a lot of artists that end up with their work on like keychains and cups. You know what I mean? And you're like, at a certain point, you're you're out to, you lost the sense of artistry and you were you're out just, just here to make money. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that's, uh, it's tough because there's opportunities that people mm-hmm. want to take, you know? And it's hard. I'm not like an artist in that sense that you guys are, you know, out there selling, mm-hmm. you know, your pieces and stuff. But, um, I can imagine it's tough to be in a position where you could potentially help yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because there's, there is no, there's the term struggling artist is a starving artist, right? Mm-hmm. Is yeah. a term for a reason because it's not easy being an artist, you yeah. know, when you're living off of solely what you're creating mm-hmm. and I can understand why someone would want to maybe help Mm -hmm. themselves you know yeah yeah but like you said it's 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 also like you're selling out you know and it's like it's it's hard it's like it's again it's a fine line yeah well (laughs) back to that i mean it it all comes down to business right right like at the same time yes it is cultural because it's dealing with native americans yeah but i think that it's more of the business side than actually part of native art culture do you know what i mean right yeah like a lot of artists have a completely different business model than i have you know what i mean Mm -hmm. for them it's fine to sell their work and make thousands of prints and be able to just crank it out and only do a little bit of work you know what i mean but for me that's not really my business model and and i think like for 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 me because i i do leather work i mean um uh, I've had a few people approach me and be like, Hey, you know, have, have you thought about a, like manufacturing this or trying to get it done more? And I'm like, yeah. I am, I am the factory. Like that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what I do. Like I am manufacturing as many as I can, as po- as fast as I can. But because, you know, I make, um, I make breastplates and I make a more traditional regalia. The question has always been like, I'm selling these to non-natives because if a native came up to me and was like, Hey, I want your, uh, I'd like that breastplate to add to my regalia. Then it would become, it would be a different conversation of like, okay, well, yeah, you know, I'd yeah, be you wouldn't honored. have any, yeah. You wouldn't have any reservations about that or, or hesitancy mm-hmm. about that. Right. Yeah. Whereas like I've had non native Americans come up and be like, so can I like wear this out? And I'd be like, 
<laughs> like, you know what? Uh, maybe not buy my boots now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, well, I mean, I was like, you know, if you want to wear it, you can wear it. Like, and it, yeah. it comes back to that idea of like, you're supporting me, a Native American. Yeah. But at the same time, the question was, is like, well, I'm selling my culture to this, this non-native. How do I feel about that? Is, is that yeah. selling out? Yeah, I guess that kind of brings us back to the actual, the original question mm-hmm. we started this, you know. But but my, my answer came to, like, yes, I, I want to share my culture. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're supporting me as a Native American. They're um, obviously paying it, paying for it. And what my worry was always, like, yes, they supported me. To me, not appropriation. But if they were to wear it to some place and do that kind of thing, other natives might see it and be like, eh, what the heck? You know, yeah. you're appropriating it. Yeah. You know, just like the Pope getting a headdress, you know? Yeah. <laughs> if he went around, took off his Pope hat yeah. and started wearing the headdress, you know, we'd all look at him a little sideways and yeah. everything and be like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, that's not the. That's not the right thing to do. It made us look at the Indians a little sideways, like, whoa, what are you, what are you, <laughs> what are you doing? What y'all, what y'all doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think this is one of those questions where it's going to, it would be, a, it's going to be a lifetime pursuit to understand, you know, where, where it all sits as far as like what's, I don't think there's a clear cut answer, you well, know, I think it's different for every person. One of the things that I, I want to bring up, though, in in the whole conversation, is the fact that um, in Japanese culture, if you go to Japan uh, and you go and wear um, the clothing, the the um, uh, yukatas and mm-hmm. and everything, I can't remember if that's how you say, it, but if you wear it, the Japanese people love it. I they remember love, you telling me that. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like it's an honor f- for them to share that with you yeah Yeah. and and it's that sharing of culture Mm -hmm. and i think that's been an issue with uh the united states in general um Uh, you know what though here's what i think though i i love that thought but i think it's because like there's a whole nation of them yeah like there's not a whole lot of us that's true it's their it's their country it's the whole country they have a country but then you, you you for and it's usually specifically for the united states just for the fact that African Americans have had their culture compromised, compromised yeah. and, and appropriated. Uh, Native Americans have had their culture compromised and appropriated. Hispanics have had their culture compromised and, and uh, appropriated. You know, Cinco de Mayo. What is that for for us? Mm-hmm. What is yeah. that for them? You know, that whole uh, conversation. Whereas in Japan, if you go to Japan, you're in J- Japan. You're yeah. around a japanese people yeah their culture is their island whereas the united states is oh, a hodgepodge yeah. of yes. everything yeah just another layer of the the mystery there i, I yeah. mean yeah I, like i said i think this is one of those things where i don't think there's a clear-cut answer mm-hmm. you know there's everybody's gonna be. have a, a different opinion about it you know uh for you as an individual person i think you know you have to make your own lines um you know, uh, and, and, but I think it's something to think about. Absolutely. I think it's something everybody should be aware Mm -hmm. of. You know what I mean? Um, I think as a consumer, you know, having good intentions (laughs) about what you're purchasing and why you're purchasing it is a big deal and who you're purchasing it from. Like you said, that makes a big difference. Yeah, is this um, person keeping it real? So yeah, like, you know, or yeah. are they just hawking the the cheap stuff that's like coming from overseas? <laughs> you know, that was, uh, you know, the headdresses you find at the gas trading station. post. Yeah, <laughs> gas oh, it's station bad. trading post. You like post, see yeah. the same print on all the dresses, yeah. and you're just like, come on. Yeah. Like, so yeah. as a consumer, <laughs> just be aware. You know, be aware of who you're be buying aware. and what you're buying and why you're buying it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and as an artist, you know think of those things i think um because like we said it's different for everybody you know um yeah but you know yeah it was a good discussion right, today. that was a All good right. discussion um take as always now. you yeah. know take remember to rate review and subscribe and share our podcast uh you can always find us on off the reservation on uh, instagram and uh facebook and be sure to be sure 
Don't be sure. We'll catch you guys be on the sure, flip be side. Sure, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Guys, I'm getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I All think right. that's it's time to go. That's it. it's nap time, food time. Yeah. Good times. Great old. What do I do? <laughs> she gave you the finger. <laughs>